candlestick patterns are simply a combination of candlesticks that indicate what price is likely to do next throughout the past 10 years of my own trading career i have tested countless candlestick patterns and what i want to do in this video is save you a lot of time and save you from doing all that testing by sharing with you what i have found to be the two most accurate candlestick patterns if i am placing a trade based on candlestick patterns it is going to be based on one of the two patterns you're going to be learning in this video this video will be broken up into three different parts. The first part will be a very simple tutorial showing you the rules of these two candlestick patterns. And in the second section of this video, I'm gonna share with you some more advanced techniques that you can utilize with these patterns in order to make them more accurate. And lastly, we'll go over some live trades I'm in right now utilizing these two candlestick patterns. So if you are a new or struggling trader interested in becoming a better trader, go ahead and click that like button for me. Go ahead and subscribe if you are new, and I'll be right back after the intro and disclaimer. Welcome back, and let's go ahead and get started. If you look at the screen, you can see a live trade we are in right now. This trade was taken based on exactly what you're going to be learning throughout this entire video. And you can see that we're on a live Oanda account. You can see that looking down here at the trading panel. And you can also see that we're currently up about $3,000 on this trade. I just wanted to show you that I actually utilize what you're going to be learning in this video to trade with real money. First off, let me explain the concept. If you're going to be trading trend continuation, you're going to be trading based on one of two things, either breakouts like flag patterns or just regular breakout patterns where you're trying to capture trend continuation based on price breaking a specific structure level, placing your stop and hoping to catch the continuation of that trend. Other than that, trend continuation traders are going to be trading based on pullbacks. And what is the best case scenario for trading pullbacks? The best case scenario, if we're trading pullbacks, is to capture the bottom of the pullback before price continues higher, right? So in order to do that, what we have to do is wait for trend to start. We have to wait for a pullback to happen. And we have to wait on an indication that buyers are trying to step back in near the bottom of that pullback in order to hop on the trend and make some profit based on that trend continuation. The candlestick patterns you're going to learn is what I use as the indication that price is likely to continue higher. And obviously a lot more goes into it than just looking for trend and just looking for candlestick patterns. We'll discuss some more advanced concepts in the second section of this video, but I wanted to show you the way we're going to utilize these patterns first. Now let's jump into the rules for these candlestick patterns themselves. So the first candlestick pattern we're going to talk about is what I call engulfing plus one. It is a very simple candlestick pattern formation and an engulfing pattern is no big secret. And there is no secret candlestick pattern. The secret of candlestick patterns is to utilize a good technical foundation before looking for the pattern and to have rules for the pattern itself. So what I mean by that is in this pattern, as you can see, we want to see an engulfing pattern, which is a red candle followed by a green candle with a larger body, meaning the close of our green candle is above the open of our previous red candle. If that is the case, we have an engulfing candle. The plus one here means that we want to see a green candle after that candlestick pattern formation. Now that's the rules for the pattern, but the secret here is to utilize a good technical foundation before looking for this pattern. Again, if we're trading based on pullbacks, our best case scenario is what? Is to capture the bottom of the pullback before trend continuation to make the most profit. What we're utilizing candlestick patterns like this engulfing plus one for is as that indication that the pullback is over. So in this case, what if we see price doing something like this? We see a pullback. We see this candlestick pattern happen after the pullback. This candlestick pattern could be an indication that the pullback is over and we're going to see trend continuation out of whatever market we're looking at at this time. So that's the context in which we're going to be looking for this exact pattern. But the pattern itself, again, engulfing plus one, is just an engulfing candle followed by a green candle. If we're looking for buy trades, if we're looking for sell trades. It's going to be exactly the opposite. We're going to be looking for a downtrend. We're going to be looking for a pullback. We're then going to want to see a bearish engulfing candle, which means we have a green candle. We then have a close of the bearish candle body below the open of the green candle. To put more simply, we want the red candle body to be larger than the green candle body. 
at that point we want to wait for one more thing for that confirmation that this pullback is over and that one more thing is just a red candle after our engulfing candle to show that sellers are really taking control here at the end of a pullback while we're in a downtrend in this specific case so that is the engulfing plus one pattern now below those patterns you can see that i have the 38.2 percent candle plus one a 38.2 percent candle is something i've talked about a couple of times on the channel for a bullish version of this i'm going to be taking a fibonacci retracement in order to spot this candlestick pattern I'm going to take this Fibonacci retracement from the lowest point that candle made, which is the low of the wick, to the highest point that candle made, which is the high of the wick. And I want to see that the entire body is above the 38.2% retracement. That's what I call a 38.2% candle. Now, the blue line you see right here is my 38.2% retracement. The plus one here, just like with the engulfing candle, means that I want to see that same color candle. So if we're looking for a buy trade, I want to see this 38.2% candle followed by a green candle. That's my plus one. And that indicates even more buying pressure coming into the market in the same way that we were looking for the engulfing plus one, that same technical foundation of needing to see an uptrend followed by a pullback applies here as well. This 38.2% plus one candlestick pattern is what gives us the indication that the pullback could be over and we could see trend continuation. Obviously, if we're trading based on trend, we want to capture the bottom of that pullback. This is how I do that. And in the bearish direction, we have the exact opposite with a 38.2% candle directly followed by a red candle. So in this case, I take my Fibonacci retracement in order to spot the bearish version of this from the high of the candle, which is the highest wick of that candle down to the low of the candle, the lowest wick of that candlestick itself. And I want to make sure the entire body of this candle is below the 38.2% retracement. If that's the case, I'm waiting for one more thing for this particular candlestick pattern, and that is what? That is going to be a red candle because we're looking for possible bearish trades. And again, in the same way, if we're in a downtrend and we see prices continuing lower, this is gonna be what we look for at the top of a pullback to indicate selling pressures coming in after a pullback, and we could possibly see trend continuation out of whatever market we're looking at in this particular case. So if you need to rewind and rewatch that, if there was anything you didn't get, watching that a couple of times, these candlestick patterns are pretty simple, so you should be able to get them pretty quickly. But now what we're going to do is go down to some live charts and take a look at a couple of live examples of each of these candlestick patterns. So on the screen in front of you, there are actually two bullish engulfing plus one patterns. Pause the video and comment below if you can already see them. Let me go ahead and point them out for you as well. Here we have price pushing higher, we then have a pullback towards the bottom of this pullback. Do you see anything that looks familiar right here? We have that exact bullish engulfing plus one candlestick pattern. And as you can see right after this pattern happened at the bottom of the pullback, which is important. We don't want to see this in the middle of nowhere, but we do want to see it after a new high and at the bottom of a pullback. So since that is the case and we do get this candlestick pattern formation, Afterwards, you can see that price did in fact continue in trend. That is the first one on the screen. If I push the market sideways just a bit, you can see that we also get another example of this as price pushes up into trend continuation, followed by pulling back, getting what right here? A nice engulfing pattern, followed by that plus one candle. With our engulfing plus one candlestick pattern at the bottom of a pullback, right before price took off and broke into new highs, into trend continuation now just to make sure that i don't cherry pick a bunch of examples that win and i don't get too many haters in the comment section let me show you a trade i actually took that did not work out utilizing this exact same approach and the reason i'm showing you this is because no matter what you trade at some point prices are going to stop trending and reverse so if you are caught in that you will end up with a losing trade which is exactly what happened to me right here we have the same exact situation we have price in trend to the upside we have new higher highs we have a pullback and this just happens to be one of the situations where this candlestick pattern did not work out on the screen in front of you we have an example of a bullish 38.2 percent plus one candlestick pattern see if you can point that out there's actually two of them so we have this push higher followed by a pullback at the very bottom of this pullback which would be the swing low of the pullback this candle is in fact a 38.2 percent candle by the way something i didn't mention 38.2 percent candles can be any color red or green now the way we see and make sure this is a 38.2 percent candle is by pulling a fib retracement from the lowest wick to the top of the candle the highest wick and as long as the 
entire body is above the 38.2% retracement, we have a 38.2% candle. The second rule for this, for it to be a 38.2% plus one candle, is that green candle afterwards. So in this case, that is exactly what we get at the bottom of the pullback right before trend continuation to the upside. Can you spot the other one? So if I push the market a bit higher here, you can see we now push into new highs, trend continuation, followed by what? A pullback, followed by this candlestick formation, which is in fact that 38.2% plus one candlestick pattern formation. Next up, we're on the Canada Yen. See if you can spot a bearish engulfing plus one candlestick pattern. Hopefully you were able to see it right here after this pullback. We have price pushing lower. We have a pullback up to the highest point of that pullback, which is going to be the highest wick of the pullback. And directly after the highest wick of that pullback, what do we get? We get this engulfing pattern followed by a red candle. This meets the criteria for that bearish 38.2% plus one candlestick pattern. As you can see, after this pullback and after this candlestick pattern, we see price continue in trend to the downside. And for our last example here on the Aussie Canada, we have a bearish 38.2% plus one candlestick pattern. Can you spot it? Here we have prices pushing down, starting a new downtrend creating new lower lows after that lower low we're looking for a pullback followed by what followed by a 38.2 percent candle which then is followed by a red candle again for a bearish example of this the way we figure out if this is in fact the 38.2 percent candle is simply by pulling a fibonacci retracement from the high of that candle to the low of that candle and making sure the entire body of that candles below the 38.2% retracement. This is essentially a shooting star. This is just the way I have of making objective rules around a shooting star candle because if the full body of this candle is below the 38.2% retracement, then that means we have a long wick to the upside. In other words, we have selling pressure right here. But as you can see, after this pullback and after our candlestick pattern formation, we then break into new lows into trend continuation. Now we're going to look at some more advanced technical factors that I add to these candlestick pattern formations in order to make them more accurate and essentially turn them into an entire strategy that I use in the markets over and over and that has proven to be profitable for me. The way we're going to do that is by looking at a live trade I'm in right now on the pound Aussie. Now first, let me talk about the more advanced technical factors I add to this to turn it into an entire trading strategy. So as you already know, for this specific trading strategy or for these candlestick patterns, I'm using them at the end of pullbacks, meaning I want to see prices in trend. We've already discussed that. Something we haven't discussed is I want this trend to be above the 50 EMA. So one of the conditions I add to this to make it more accurate is that this trend must be happening above the 50 period exponential moving average. And so we need prices to be above the 50 EMA making new higher highs and higher lows very clearly. What I do not want to see is prices going back and forth while the EMA is just in the middle of them and then try to place a trade. I want to make sure we have clear higher highs and higher lows above the 50 EMA before I look for a bullish trade. So other than trend and other than utilizing the 50 period exponential moving average, what else do I utilize with these candlestick pattern formations in order to turn them into an entire trading strategy that gives me an edge over the market? That would be structure levels. If you've ever seen any of my videos before, you know that I rely heavily on structure in my own trading. What I mean by structure is the previous level of resistance that was broken becomes a very likely area that we will see support from in the future. Now I add to that even further by making sure this level has been tested at least two times. So if I scroll out here and we go ahead and analyze this entire trade before I ever look for the candlestick pattern formations you've learned about in this video. First, here's what I want to see. I want to see that prices are making very clear higher highs and higher lows above the 50 EMA. I'm waiting for a brand new high in this case. Before looking for a pullback, I want that pullback to come to a level of structure that was previously broken and also a level of structure that's been tested multiple times, at least twice. Here we have one test, two tests, making this a major level of structure. I also call these OTZs or optimal trading zones. When price is here, this is the only time I pay attention to these candlestick pattern formations. Again, no candlestick pattern, no candlestick pattern formation is ever going to be the secret to your profitable trading. You will have to find a combination of technical factors, including 
a candlestick pattern or candlestick pattern formations like you have learned in this video, you will have to learn how to exploit that over and over in markets on a daily basis. And that's how you acquire an edge of the market. And that's how you actually make money as a trader. So with all these conditions coming together now is when I can look for one of those candlestick pattern formations we've talked about in this video. If we go forward here, as you've already seen right here, we end up getting what? This would be that engulfing pattern plus one candlestick pattern formation, which is the exact reason I actually entered into this trade. And again, as you've already seen, if I click play, prices since have broken into new highs and we're getting pretty close to our targets here on the pound Canada. So in order to turn the candlestick pattern formations you've learned in this video into a profitable trading strategy, what I have done is combined them with technical factors like this trend needs to be happening above the 50 period moving average for a bullish trade. The pullback before the candlestick pattern formation must come to a level of structure that's been tested multiple times. And that's when I start to look for the candlestick pattern formations you've learned about in this video so far. I also sent this out to the traders involved in the TTC Forex University. You can see that email looking left. And this is something we call email analysis. We actually have some space available right now in the TTC Forex University. Essentially, the university is a full course from A to Z, teaching you every lesson I've learned throughout my decade of trading experience. We cover everything from the extreme basics of the Forex market to advanced trading strategies I utilize in my trading on a daily basis. And on top of that, you get email analysis like this two to five times per week of trades I'm actually placing with real money in real markets based on the strategies you're learning inside of the course. And on top of that, it is a mentorship program, meaning any questions you have about trading, it'll be me personally answering those questions to help speed up your journey and to help make your journey to profitable trading as smooth as possible. If that's something you're interested in, go ahead and click the top link in the description to get all the details about that, or you can go to www.thetradingchannel.com. If not, that is completely fine too. Let's go ahead and move forward now. We're gonna take a look at one more example to ensure that you understand this complete strategy. And then we're gonna talk a little bit about risk management, drawdowns, and trading psychology. Here we're on the pound Swiss. This is another trade I'm currently in live. And I kinda of want you to break down this trade yourself before I point it out to you. What has price done? What do we see? Well, let's start from the beginning. Are we trending above the 50 period exponential moving average, which is my blue line right here? Yes, we are currently seeing price make highs, higher lows, and higher highs above the 50 period exponential moving average, meaning the condition one is met. What are we looking for next? Next up, we wanna see price come down to the previous level of structure that was broken. We also wanna see that that level, and it's going to be a zone, has been tested multiple times. If we scroll left, it's a bit further back, but as you can see, we have this level being tested multiple times by price, including it is the latest level of resistance that was broken. So now what do we want to see? Now we wanna see this pullback come into this zone that we've created, utilizing our previous level of resistance that was broken in an uptrend, along with this level that has been tested multiple times. And at that point is when we wanna start looking for one of these candlestick pattern formations that you've learned throughout this video. So. Let's go ahead and push forward here. Does this match the criteria for one of those formations? Yes, this would be our engulfing plus one candlestick pattern formation. And this is the reason I entered the trade here on the pound Swiss. Now on this trade, the entry candle was a bit large just to give a little bit more detail here. I'm not gonna go through stops and targets in specific because this video is gonna be super long anyway, but something I do try to do is ensure that my targets can be a one-to-one -one up to the previous highs. What I mean by that is if we have some super large candle here, I'm gonna wait for a pullback of some kind. So I actually put a limit order right here because having my limit order at where you see this little position tool, that's what gave me the opportunity to have more than a one-to-one -one up to the previous highs. So that's what I did in this trade specifically. And with that being the case, the market did in fact come down, touch our order barely, but did get us into the market before pushing into new highs and trend continuation here on the pound Swiss. So now that you essentially have a full strategy that you can decide whether or not you would like to use after doing your own testing, let's talk about the second most important part of your trading. And this is going to be risk management. Now, why is risk management so important? Risk management is important because when we're trading, we're not trading based on knowing what's going to happen next in markets. 
Anytime I place a trade, I have no idea what that single trade will do. Instead, professional traders are trading based on a statistic advantage. For example, the strategy you learned here today gives me about a 60% chance to win a trade. Now, what that means is that I'm going to lose around 40 out of every 100 trades that I place. So with that being the case, I need to prepare for those losses. And also, we don't know how those losses are going to occur. You could easily have 10 losses in a row with a strategy that wins 60% of the time. Now, this is something I see a lot of beginner traders doing that are trying to get rich overnight. They're risking something like 10% of their account value per trade. Let's say they have a $1,000 account. They're risking 100 bucks every single time they place a trade because they don't understand the statistics of trading, which is, again, if you have a strategy, your strategy is not going to win every single time. You're not Merlin. I'm not Merlin. Merlin's a wizard, in case you didn't know. We don't have a crystal ball that's going to tell us exactly what the market's going to do. Your strategy is not a crystal ball that's going to give you exactly what the market's going to do next. Instead, again, we're trading based on a statistic advantage. So if I'm going to lose 40 out of the next 100 trades I place, and I have no idea how those losses are going to come, I know that it's possible for me to have 10 losses in a row, then do you think it's a good idea to risk 10% per trade? No, because if I lose 10 in a row, risking 10% per trade, what's my account going to be at? Goose egg. It's going to be at zero. So this is one of the main reasons risk management is so important. Firstly, it's going to keep you as safe as possible and keep the likelihood of you completely blowing your account at a minimum. Now, another reason risk management is so important is because of your mindset. Risk management is by far the best lever we have to control our emotions while we're trading. If you're trading, again, let's use the same example, a strategy that wins 60% of the time. You know there's a possibility you could lose 10 in a row, and let's say you're risking 5% per trade. What does that mean your account is going to do after 10 losses in a row? It's going to split in half. So if you start with a thousand bucks, you have 10 losses in a row, you're going to be down to $500. Do you think that you will be able to stay out of your emotions after losing half of your account? Will you be able to keep from making emotional mistakes? Will you be able to keep from switching strategies after this, this strategy has lost you half your account? After you've lost 10 trades in a row with this strategy, can you keep trading it if you're risking 5% per trade? The answer for most traders, especially beginner and struggling traders, is no. And that's the reason that you need to reduce your risk while you're becoming a better trader. I'm not saying that for the rest of your trading career, you have to risk 1%, 2% or less of your account value per trade. What I'm saying is while you're learning how to trade, while you're a beginner, while you're struggling as a trader, risking a smaller amount is always a better decision because of the fact that you're still learning and because of the fact that there is a very high likelihood you're going to have a number of losses in a row. That's just how trading works. And you have to be prepared for that by minimizing the risk you have on the table, by utilizing stop losses, by utilizing a small percentage of your account as your risk on every trade that you place. And doing this will help you master what I call the triangle of trading success. So the triangle of trading success looks like this. This is the triangle and inside of it is all the traders that are making money around the world. Outside of it is everyone that's not making money. What all the traders that are making money around the world have in common is they have a strategy that they stick to that gives them an edge over the market. Now, I don't care if this is a strategy based on fundamentals and macroeconomics or if it's a strategy based on complete technicals and that's it. They have a strategy of some kind that they utilize and that gives them an edge over the market. Other than that, they have a risk management plan that not only keeps them from blowing their account, but also keeps them emotionless or as emotionless as possible while they're trading. And outside of that, they have good trading psychology, a good trading mindset, mostly due to the fact that they use good risk management. When you combine the three of these, it is inevitable that you become a profitable trader. These are by far the three biggest pillars to anyone making money as a trader and mastering these three things should be the next thing on your list if becoming a profitable trader is your main goal.
If you enjoyed today's video and got value out of it, be sure to click that like button for me. It helps out the channel. Comment below if you made it to the end, and I'll try to like every comment that says they made it to the end. My voice is nearly gone. Again, if you're interested in some more advanced training, we have some space available in the TTC Forex University. Feel free to click the top link in the description or go to www.thetradingchannel.com to check out the details on that mentorship program. If that's not something you're interested in, no big deal at all. Just be sure you're subscribed here and click the notification bell to be notified when we come out with more valuable content. I wish you the best of luck on all your future trades. I hope you trade green and I'll talk to you in the next video. See you soon.